Welcome back everyone. Today we are painting up some Star Wars Legion Stormtroopers from the latest game from Fantasy Flight Games. And I know what you're thinking right now. Uh, going to be a very short article. We're just going to spray white and then wash with black or light gray. But as you know, I like to do things a little bit more complicated. And I'm sure there's already guides out there on how to paint Stormtroopers that way. So we're going to do something a little different. The figures themselves are a fairly hard PVC material, more akin to something that you would find in modern board games. And they're not that great, unfortunately. Seam lines all over the place, especially running through detailed areas. And it's extremely difficult to get off uh, from this material because it leaves a lot of burrs as you sand it. There are, they are two piece. I really wish they made the effort and at least made them three pieces. If the heads were not attached, that would solve a lot of the problems. Because this is a PVC material, you need to use some form of super glue to glue them together. Plastic cement will not work. However, you can use plastic cement to clean up any little burrs left from the filing process. Just brush it on and it will eat away a very small portion of the PVC. After priming them with black primer, we begin the painting process and we are starting off with Vallejo Model Color Light gray through the airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, that's okay. You can do this with a heavy dry brush as well. And actually I've done this both ways and I'm not entirely sure which way is quicker. A heavy dry brush so the black stays in the deep recesses or airbrushing with light gray and then going back in and painting the black. They both take about the same amount of time. Next comes a dry brushing step. This is a mix of Leho Game Colors Wolf Gray and Dead White. Uh, a little bit heavier on the Dead White, I'd say about a 70 to 30 mix. And this is a time saving step. Uh, we're just doing a heavy dry brush here to uh, cut down on the number of layers we'll have to do later. And we want to leave the light gray in the areas around the trim uh, that runs up and down all the armor plates. Next is Vallejo Model Color Black and we need to paint in all the black areas of the miniature which includes the gun, the gloves, uh, any areas that you can see of the undersuit like the back of the knees and the elbows and also all the little details on the helmets. Uh, that is including things that should not be black like the little hash marks on the side of the helmet. Yes I know they are blue in the movie however uh, because they are recessed and there's only two marks on this model I went with black uh, just because blue looked odd the way the model was sculpted. If you dry brushed with light gray this step will be a little bit easier since you just have to touch up the black in the recessed areas rather than painting it fresh. With the black established, we can now go back to the mixture we just used of Vallejo Game Color Wolf Gray and Dead White and we can start painting in all the panels. This time we are using thinned paint rather than a dry brush. And how thin you want to make this depends, as always, uh, how many layers you want to apply. Uh, I have this fairly thick and I try to keep it to about three layers total. Uh, we want to cover up all of the light gray, uh, except we want, we want to leave it in, once again, the recessed areas where there's trim on the panels. So you can see that little trim in the back of the leg there, uh, leave a nice little line of light gray and then paint everything else with our wolf gray and white combo. Mm -hmm. 
And then our final color for the white is game color Dead White. And once again, it's a little thin, about the consistency of milk. And we're gonna apply two to three layers here. Uh, because we are painting white, uh, we're not just doing the highlight areas here. We're basically doing the base coat and the highlight. So we're leaving the previous white and wolf gray mixture uh, in any areas where we want a little extra shadow on the under area of the arms, on the back of the legs, and what have you. At this point, you can go ahead and do a little bit of touch-up work if needed. Reapply the light gray in some of the recessed areas or touch up the black. And also, I'm painting all these little holes in the forearm guards with Vallejo Game Color Cold Gray. Uh, tried light gray and it was too light and black was too dark, so I needed a new color of gray to use here. Next comes the highlights for the black areas, and for that we're using a mix of game color cold gray mixed with black. And main areas are uh, the back of the hips, the gloves, and that little ridge above the eyes. Uh, we are not going to bother with the gun because we're going to paint that slightly different. For the blasters, we are using Vallejo Model Color Black mixed with Vallejo Metal Color Gunmetal Gray. And I mixed up a very, very dark black metallic. You can leave them black and that's perfectly accurate. However, uh, because of the gloves, I felt the blasters needed to look slightly different. And so giving them a slight metallic sheen helps to make them look more distinctive from the rest of the model. Returning to the white armor, there are some areas that we need to add a little bit more contrast. Basically the separations between plates on the armor. And for that we're using some very thinned black paint and just carefully applying them wherever needed. Uh, you could have actually done this in the step where we painted all the black, which honestly I did that, uh, but I forgot to record that on camera. So uh, you can save yourself some time by doing it then or using it as a cleanup step now. Next comes some weathering, and for that I'm using Vallejo Model Color Green Ochre, same color that I'm using to paint the base. And we're applying this in two different methods. First we put on a thin version, more like a wash, put it in a blotchy pattern. And then once that's dry, put it on with uh, the paint being a little bit thicker and applying it more of a stippling method. So we have a different two-tone effect going on. And our second weathering color is Vallejo Model Color Camo Black Brown. And applying this uh, with a stippling method over the areas where we already applied the green ochre. Uh, I'm also using it on the bases as well to get a two-tone effect on the earth. Uh, some areas a little bit more wet and some drying out. Now, here comes the painful part. We're adding some color to our stormtroopers. Uh, it feels sacrilegious to do so, and I really didn't want to, but this is a miniature game, and you have units of figures, and you need a way to tell the units apart. So, I painted the trim lines on the shoulder pads of each of the stormtroopers. For this particular unit, I'm using a mix of Vallejo model color flat yellow mixed with yellow ochre uh, because I didn't want a really bright intense yellow. Uh, you could do anything you want. You could even uh, instead paint 
uh, little numbers on the bases. You don't have to do it this way. This is just what I decided to do. And then the final thing to do before sealing and adding groundwork is to add a wash to the base. I'm using a mix of game color inks, black and brown, and applying a fairly heavy wash here. Uh, I wanted a dark base because I was picturing this unit going through a thick indoor-like forest, so rich earth dark colors. And there we go, there are our finished stormtroopers ready to be blown away instantly. This is not the quickest painting method for painting stormtroopers. As I mentioned beginning, if you're looking for something fast, spray paint them white and then add a gray paint wash. Uh, I like to layer things and also this is really good practice for layering if you're trying to learn it yourself. Also, applying it this method gives them a little bit more character to each individual model. So, fairly, well, I was about to say fairly decent miniatures. They are interesting to paint. Uh, the quality of the miniatures is disappointing. Uh, a lot of the seam lines are going right through important detail areas, especially around the helmets. So, those little hash marks on the sides get messed up or the ear guards are screwed up on several. Uh, very, very disappointing they didn't put more work into the quality of the miniatures. But uh, this will be just the first. We'll have a few more of Star Wars, Star Wars Legion painting guides coming up shortly. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Good night, yeah, Mother. Boy. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Hercastle. Good night, McCormick. Good night, Chief. Good night, McLeod. <laughs>